Hey guys! Welcome to a new travel adventure. Back in October 2015, while in Tokyo, we took the bullet train to both Kyoto and Osaka. We spent a couple of amazing days digging in those amazing culture and foodie cities. If you want to see more of it, please come along with me. The first day in Kyoto, we decided to pay a visit to the Fushimi Inari Taisha. Oops, I hope I didn't offend anyone with my pronunciation. When I travel, I don't need to go to every shrine or temple in the city, but this one was just splendid. I have seen on Pinterest for so long and I knew I would pay a visit someday, and I'm glad I did. For more details of my visit to the shrine, please go to stylishchameleon.com. Kyoto is well known for the good food, and I had the most tastiest kabi beef ever. After lunch, we decided to pay a visit to the bamboo forest. It was nice, relaxing, just being there. As the shrine, I had seen pictures, amazing pictures of the bamboo forest in Pinterest, but my picture just sucks. I don't even want to share it here. We finally made it to Gien. Gien is a popular area to spot geishas. It just has this cool old vibe in there. You can find tea houses, shops. And guys, don't be fooled. Not everyone who has a kimono or yukata walking around is a geisha. Wandering around Kyoto is just magical. It feels like you're in a movie scenario. No wonder why they choose Kyoto, especially Gion, for the setting of the novel, The Memoirs of a Geisha. As a self-proclaimed foodie, Kyoto blew my mind. When you're there, you literally need to try this spot. We had chocolate gyoza, curry gyoza, cheese gyoza. It was just unbelievable. This city wasn't just beautiful, historical, it was romantic at the same time. Those canals on the middle of the city just stole my heart. If you need a crazy food experience, you certainly need to check the Fire Ramen restaurant and make sure you come early. Understand why everyone raves about Kyoto. It's in that a special city. Thank you, Kyoto. Your canals, your food, oh my god, your food, your magical beauty will forever leave a mark in my heart. <laughs> Oh, 
you such a mean person. Look into your eyes, I can't find you. Our day in Osaka started at the Momofuku Ando Instant Ramen Museum. Momofuku Ando is the creator and founder of the Instant Ramen. The ramen that we eat on a weekly, monthly, some people even daily basis. He's the one who made all this possible. I know, I know, I was just tripping with all the ramen caps in there. It's about 300 yen to buy and customize your own ramen cup. I think it's a really nice way to spend the morning in Osaka, especially if you like interactive museums the way I do. Don't be escaped when I can keep this all behind. Now is not too late. How do we get it by this time? When it's ready, they're going to handle you a plastic bag. You can put in there your noodle cup and then you can bring home. Of course, we can't leave the ramen museum without eating anything in there. So you can just go straight to the machines and buy a cup of noodle and enjoy it. Later on, we headed to the Tombori and we started with Rikuro cheesecake. According to TripAdvisor, one of the best cheesecakes in Osaka. Cheesecakes are huge in Japan and Rikuros didn't disappoint at all. But guys, bear in mind that Japanese cheesecakes are more fluffier in texture than the standard cheesecake. Tombori was just so cool, from shopping, entertainment, food, there was just so much going in there. You can't come to Osaka and not try takoyaki, the famous octopus ball. I have tried takoyaki before in China and so far I like that, so I was sure I would like it in Japan. And guys, I didn't just like it, I loved it. Time was short in Osaka, but I enjoy it a lot. I'm just sad I couldn't try Okonomiyaki, but now I have a reason to come back. Thank you for coming along. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, please leave down below.